Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Blazik. I'm with the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy Environmental Support Division, and I'm going to be the moderator for tonight's public hearing. Uh, so welcome to the public hearing for tonight. Um, it's for the Rainbow Lake Water Drawdown, Pine Township in Montcalm County. All right. uh, just for information, this is the applicant information for the hearing. Uh, Todd Sattler is the Montcalm County, County Drain Commissioner. commissioner. Uh, this is the file number and address. But before we get too far into tonight, I uh, just want to go through kind of our agenda uh, and what we have in store for the evening. We have an introduction. Uh, we're going to be introducing, introducing our staff uh, from Eagle who are uh, involved with this application. And then this is kind of going to be divided into two parts. We're going to have the first part as an informational session. So it'll be about a 10 minute presentation to kind of talk about the project, the application, uh, people involved, and what the scope is. Um, then we're going to have a question and answer session. So you'll have a chance to ask questions about the project um, you know, of our staff. And you will be doing that either through the question and answer section that you'll see in the Zoom toolbar, or you'll be able to raise your hand for that question and answer session. Um, and that'll go probably until about 6.30ish. Um, which, so we, then we should have enough time to go through uh, everybody's comments at that point. Uh, and then we're gonna go actually into the public hearing portion, which is the way you're gonna submit kind of your official comment for the record for tonight. And that's the kind of the official part of the hearing. And everybody have a chance to, for the record, you know, kind of put a statement for tonight's uh, hearing. Uh, and then we'll also talk a little bit on where to find other information and who to contact with further questions. And for those of you who haven't done a Zoom webinar before, or haven't done one of these public hearings, I'm just gonna go on some of the background and logistics. Uh, all the lines are muted during the webinar, so you can hear us, we can't hear you. You'll be able to submit those questions using the question box, as I had just mentioned in the Zoom toolbar, but then we'll also have the opportunity to raise your hand and we can call on you for those questions and answers. Uh, and we're also recording this meeting. It's gonna go on our YouTube channel and then you should receive a link in a couple days to the recording so that you'll be able to watch it again if you so choose. All right, and at this time, I'd like to introduce our staff, uh, Chad Dipshire and Jeff Fisher. If you kind of want to introduce yourself today. Hi, my name is Chad Hipshire. I am an environmental quality analyst with the Water Resource Division out of the Grand Rapids District Office. Um, I am the one that is reviewing this application and am the hearings officer for this public hearing. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jeff Fisher. I'm the current acting district supervisor for the Grand Rapids District Office. I'm here to answer any additional questions that you might have this evening. Um, and I will be helping Chad review the final project um, for this permit. All right, thank you very much, Chad and Jeff, for your introductions. I should also mention we have Jim Ostrowski. Uh, with Eagle as well. Uh, he's on the line and he's kind of going to be helping out in the background. So you might hear Jim's voice now and again. All right, so this is kind of the point in the presentation. We're going to have the applicant uh, give that, you know, roughly 10 minute presentation on the project. And so Mr. Paul Fortin with Spicer Group is going to be presenting. And he should be in our list of participants today. And so what we'll need to do is identify you, Paul, and then unmute you. And it looks like you are currently unmuted. Are you there, Paul? You betcha. Can you hear me, Ryan? Yeah, I can hear you really well. Yeah, thanks for calling in. Uh, I have your presentation here as part of this presentation. And so what we'll do is if you just want to let me know uh, when you move on to the, want to move on to the next slide, I will switch slides for you. And then if you could keep it to around 10 minutes, it would be good because it'll kind of keep us on time uh, for the question and answer and then for the kind of the main hearing portion of tonight. Sounds good. We will uh, get started then and uh, wait to go ahead and pull up my our slide presentation.
and I will do my best to keep it under 10 minutes. My hope is to provide enough information to uh, maybe shorten the question and answer time too, as I know there's been a lot of uh, conversation and discussion uh, locally about this project. So again, my name is Paul Fortin. I work for Spicer Group. We're an engineering firm. I work in our, manage our Byron Center office uh, just south of Grand Rapids. And if you wanna go on to the next slide, Ryan. Uh, tonight, we'll briefly talk about the location, which I'm fairly confident everybody knows where we're gonna be looking today. I wanna get into some of the flooding issues that we've seen, talk about our proposed plan. Uh, there's been a lot of discussions about flow rates, uh, specifically how much water is going to be moving uh, potentially, and then also talk about some of the biological concerns related to the project. Uh, next slide, please. So we are northeast of Grand Rapids, straight north of Greenville. Uh, going to the next slide, the uh, Rainbow and Middle Lake and Sawdust Lake, those three lakes are interconnected through culverts. Uh, one is below Briggs Road that connects Rainbow Lake to Middle. And then the uh, Sawdust Lake is also connected to Middle Lake and the flow through these lakes, uh, water normally flows from Sawdust north into Middle and then Middle Lake flows north into Rainbow Lake through a culvert under Briggs Road. And moving on to the next slide, a little bit of background about how we got here. Uh, the drain commissioner received an application for a new drain uh, within that watershed that feeds uh, Rainbow, Middle and Sawdust Lakes. There's approximately 400 parcels. The land use associated with that is a mixture of residential, agricultural and forested areas. And the main reason for the submittal of the application was severe flooding that was occurring on Rainbow Lake, as well as Middle Lake. And uh, as we have some photos here that we'll go through if you want to go on to the next slide, Ryan. This is a picture from February 10th of 2020 of West Briggs Road. Again, Briggs Road is the road that connects Middle and Rainbow Lakes. And you can see the ice over the road uh, causing obviously safety concerns and uh, issues not only for local residents, uh, but also you know, buses, uh, deliveries, mail services, and probably most importantly, emergency services uh, and folks being able to access uh, the homes. Uh, the next slide that we have in the presentation is a picture from a home on Middle Lake. This is inside the home. You can see that uh, this is a single story home, I guess, for reference, there is no basement in this home. And on the bottom of the photo, you might be able to tell that there's standing water within this home, uh, enough water that the garbage can was able to float and then tip over. And so it gives you a reference as to how much water uh, was in this particular home. And um, again, severe issues, not only for this particular residence, but several around the lake. Moving on to the next slide, you can see a picture of the exterior of the home. And uh, so the water surface, you can see it up the siding into uh, the, the front door. Uh, during one of the public meetings, the, uh, the neighbor to this particular residence uh, stated that he could hear the house literally cracking as the water froze that winter in and around the home. And so um, just one example of several issues that we have around the lake. Uh, the next slide has a picture of a home on Rainbow Lake. And you'll notice the date has changed. We're now into midsummer and the levels are still high. Uh, one of the things I'd like to point out from this particular photo is that the, the maturity of the trees that are inundated with water, uh, one of the things that has happened due to the high water levels around Rainbow Lake is the fact that uh, they're losing many of the mature trees that have been there for many, many years. And uh, I think it's important to note as far as water surfaces go that the uh, water surface elevations were three to four feet higher than normal. And one thing I don't believe I've noted thus far is that uh, Rainbow Lake, this system is a kettle bowl lake and the fact that it does not have a natural outlet for that water to leave. It either needs to infiltrate or evaporate. And so the, the main cause for this problem is related to the high groundwater tables uh, that we've seen in recent uh, through last year. Uh, fortunately, we got a little bit of reprieve from that uh, through the summer with dry periods and, uh, and not a lot of fall rains. And as a result of that, water levels have subsided from uh, the photos that you see here. 
the picture of the next uh, slide there, Ryan, is uh, a photo taken again of Briggs Road, just documenting that the water is still over the road in mid-June. Um, this, uh, from this angle, we're facing west, and Rainbow Lake is to the right or north, and uh, Middle Lake would be to our left or south. The uh, diving into our proposed plan and, and how we'd like to solve this problem. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, right now, we are proposing to install a new storm sewer uh, through the southwest corner of Rainbow Lake. There's a little bay there. And what we'd like to do is not lower, you know, lower the lake or control the water surface elevation of the lake, but simply remove the excess water from the lake. So a lot of folks have asked, is this a legal lake level study? Are we establishing a legal lake level? And the answer to that is no. Uh, this storm sewer would be installed and designed simply to remove excess water from the lake in the event of uh, larger storms. So the storm sewer would proceed in a southerly direction uh, through upland ground and then turn west. And there's a little bit of a, a, a kink in the, in the run there to, to divert around a low spot or a wetland. And the storm sewer would then outlet into the green triangular area that we've got shown on this map. And that is a uh, cattail marsh. And that is on the east side of Gravel Ridge there for folks that may not be able to, to read the font there. Uh, once it's discharged into that cattail marsh, it can proceed through a natural water course to the west. Uh, there is a pond in that particular area that the water would go through before again proceeding further west and eventually outletting through a wetland into Muscalange Lake. Uh, the reason that we've, we, there were many options that we considered to try to solve this problem. Uh, this particular option solves the issues, the core issues for Rainbow Lake. Uh, the pipe is completely in upland ground, so there is no uh, disturbance to any adjacent wetlands. Uh, the ability to install a gravity pipe is advantageous because it allows us to avoid the need for a pump uh, and power and maintenance concerns. Uh, the other nice thing about this design, uh, and I'll have you move on to the next slide, Ryan, is that uh, it can discharge into, oop, I apologize, actually the previous slide would be great. Uh, the, uh, the water that discharges out of, so I guess let me step back a little bit and say, we would design the outlet uh, at Rainbow Lake to take the surface water off the top. So inherently we're starting with clean surface water that's not sediment laden uh, or having any issues of sediment entering it. From there, again, it's gonna discharge into the cattail swamp where the, uh, the green triangle is. That cattail swamp will provide for filtration uh, it can attenuate those flows, which means it can store that stormwater in there for, for some time before it's released. Uh, and so we're putting clean water into a filtration system, natural filtration system, which then goes through the natural water course into uh, the pond. And then from the pond, uh, that can act as another settling sump, basically, and, uh, and then proceed to, uh, before it proceeds to Muscalange. So basically clean water in, multiple filtration areas across the, uh, across the uh, flow path and then outletting into Muscalange. Another important thing to note is the, um, I guess before I move ahead into, the, into more details of the design, let's go on to that next slide, Ryan, and we can show you a picture of the cattail swamp where this would outlet. Again, you can see a large expansive flat. This is on the east side of Gravel Ridge again. Uh, and this area would then store that stormwater and release it below uh, through Gravel Ridge Road through an existing culvert. The next slide is of uh, the marsh that proceeds to the west. And so that water is further filtered by the wetlands and attenuated in, within those wetlands and uh, before proceeding to a pond and then outletting the Muscalange. So one of the important um, things I'd like to talk about tonight is flow rate. I know that there's a lot of folks that are interested in how much water this is going to be. And so if you wanna go on to the next slide, Ryan, I'd like to spend a, just a little bit of time talking about flow rates. Right now, the maximum flow rate that we would achieve through, through this gravity pipe system is 1.9 million gallons per day. And I know that sounds like a tremendous amount of water. Uh, but let's, I want to break that down a little bit so that it might be a little bit more comprehensible for everybody. Uh, we're restricting the water through a 15 inch pipe. 
that would be our proposed pipe. And so we know that no more water can push through this system than what that 15 inch will allow. And as we look at lowering Rainbow Lake, 1.9 million gallons, again, that sounds like a lot per day, but if we were to open that up, Rainbow Lake, the system there and the acreage that it provides would only drop about 0.36 inches per day. And so at that flow rate, it's gonna take at least two months to fully lower Rainbow Lake, um, starting at a base elevation of 908.4, which is more realistic to what it, how it sits today. And we're looking to lower that down to 907.0 if you've looked at the permit application. Uh, once it's lowered to that uh, elevation, uh, the, there will be no flow, basically. As that water drops, once it gets below the invert and it's drawn down, the only additional flow will come after a rain event and only if the water surface is up to the base of that 15 inch pipe. And so the ratio of acres between the rainbow system and muscalange system is 0 0.95. And you know, going back to grade school, essentially what that means, that ratio means that the rainbow system, the acreage that that stores is uh, smaller than the acreage that the muscalange system and its surrounding wetland provides. And so when we take the 0.36 inches per day out of Rainbow Lake, what that would equate to is 0.34 inches in Muscalange Lake. And, and that's only if Muscalange Lake were dammed off. So if you were completely, if you were to completely seal off the 36 inch pipes, there's two 36 inch pipes that drain Muscalange. If you were to completely seal those off and we were to open up the pipe, 0.35 inches of height would be dropped out of Rainbow Lake and Muscalange would come up about the same at that 0.34. And again, that assumes no other inputs or outlets and no wetland attenuation. Uh, for all intensive purposes, uh, with there being two 36 inch pipes leading out of the lake, uh, it's, it's very unlikely that uh, Muscalange residents would even notice that there's a change as that water would simply pass right through the system and proceed downstream. Uh, moving on to the next slide, the uh, 15 inch outlet pipe again that we're proposing, um, you know, we've, we've mentioned this 1.9 million gallons per day. That's only when the pipe is full. And what will happen is that water, as it starts to drop in the pipe, once the pipe reaches half full, it's only 0.97 gallons per day. So we're, we're basically pulling out uh, half of that water out of the system. So instead of 0.36 inches, we're, we're more like you know, 0.18. We're rapidly across, approaching less than a quarter of an inch um, of water. And that will continue to lower once Rainbow Lake and the flow rate will continue to decrease because as you lower through a, a pipe, less flow is able to be passed downstream. And so moving on to the next slide, um, the Muscalange outlet capacity, I know that's been a, a serious concern for a lot of residents that, that I've talked to. Uh, again, as I alluded to, there are two 36 inch pipes that uh, discharge Muscalange Lake. Uh, those then proceed through a channel um, that uh, crosses through a corrugated metal pipe arch underneath Stanton Road. And in October, on October 19th, we, we, measured, we measured flow rates in and out of uh, Muscalange twice. Uh, the first time we measured it was in, on October 19th. And we measured the inlet that we're proposing to use to send water to Muscalange. And, on October 19th, it was 0 0.55 million gallons per day. And then we measured the flow rate out of the channel of Muscalange Lake and calculated it to be 3.4 million gallons per day. Two weeks later, we came back out and, and did the same measurements. And at that time, we found that the nat natural water course had almost doubled in its flow rate. And so it jumped to 1.08 million gallons per day but the actual outlet of Muscalange Lake had dropped to 2.29 million gallons per day. And so it's, I guess this is just an important to note that uh, there are many factors at play within watersheds and in increasing the, the flow rate from this particular channel uh, re actually resulted, the overall system had a decrease in the flow rate coming out of Muscalange. Uh, so again, despite the inflow doubling, the discharge through the outlet decreased. 
Uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, there have been a lot of biological concerns and considerations given to uh, this particular project. Uh, many folks are concerned about invasive species, which is certainly a valid concern. Uh, we noted that Eurasian uh, water milfoil as well as curly leaf pond weed are present in both Rainbow and Muscalange lakes. Uh, and that is based on the weed treatment programs in both lakes we were able to identify through the permitting process that, that those species are already in both lakes. Uh, another concern certainly for the DNR would be red ear sunfish. And we know, for example, that red ear sunfish were historically stocked in Rainbow Lake. Uh, the current population status is unknown and talking to some residents, it sounds like they haven't seen them for a while. Uh, but their you know, transfer of this species is, uh, is not allowed and, and not ideal. Uh, in addition to, to looking at these two, or these two groups, we also look for zebra mussels as that is also a concern on our inland lakes. And we did a uh, inspection of Rainbow Lake and identified that we could not find any evidence that zebra mussels exist within Rainbow Lake. So as we talk about uh, sending water from Rainbow to Muscalange, um, these were some of the issues that we wanted to ensure that we considered. Moving on to the next slide, uh, water quality is always of concern. Um, there are known no issues of water quality within Rainbow Lake. Uh, there were some analyses done in 2020 of the Rainbow Lake water um, from a local farmer, and they are a producer of uh, crops for production of baby food. And so obviously safety is first and foremost uh, for their customers. And uh, in 2020, there was, you know, as both coliform, E. coli, nitrate, and nitrite were all tested in Rainbow Lake, and uh, the levels were low. Um, now, regarding wetland impacts, you know, based upon the condition of the existing wetlands and the proposed hydraulic conditions with this particular project, uh, no negative impacts are expected. Uh, but with that being said, we do have monitoring wells that are installed that we will be able to keep an eye on uh, into the future. So um, I apologize, Ryan. I know I took a little bit more than uh, 10 minutes, most likely here, but I wanted to provide at least as much information as I could related to the questions that, uh, that we've received and heard about thus far. So with that, I'll turn it back to you. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for giving that presentation, Paul. Um, so from here, we're gonna do the question and answer uh, portion of the hearing tonight. And just to review again, kind of how to ask the question in the Zoom platform, uh, there should be a question and answer box at the bottom of your screen where you can just type your answer in and then I'll read those you know, off to our staff. Uh, or you can click your hand, the canned icon at the bottom of your screen. And so that'll raise your hand. And then once your hand is raised, you can wait for me to call on you. I'll probably be going back and forth between the question and answer box and calling on people whose hands are raised. But I'll need to first unmute you um, when I call on you and then you have to unmute yourself and then you can answer your question. And then also, if there's anybody who is on the phone today, and I'm going to do a quick, um, let's see, yeah, it looks like there are people on the phone today. So if you're on the phone and you want to raise your hand to ask a question, you can hit pound two. So if you hit pound two, you should have the capability of raising your hand um, in Zoom. So without further ado, let's Let's go ahead and get started here. I have a couple questions right now that are in the question and answer box. And the first one is, uh, can you show what is new construction? I think so I'll I'm refer not, that I'm, to Paul probably. Yeah, I was able to unmute there. Can you guys still hear me okay? Yeah, we can, yes. we can hear you. I'm not sure if this is in the, in the PowerPoint or you know, I think if you go back to slide, uh, there is a map, and I believe it would be slide, let's say slide 11 or 12. Uh, I would I go to slide 11. I can't, the easiest. I can't uh, see which. Okay, so is this one? Um, actually, drop down a few through the photos. Keep going. Oh, no. 
and slow down once you get past water over Briggs Road in June. Keep going. I've got the photos. One, two more right there. Okay. Excellent. So as far as new construction, uh, right now, uh, just the dark blue line west of Gravel Ridge would be the only area, I'm sorry, east of Gravel Ridge. Let me get my directions correct here. The dark blue line east of Gravel Ridge where we've got that label proposed storm sewer, that would be the only portion of construction that we would uh, propose at this time. We are not proposing to do anything to the existing wetlands or natural channels downstream of that point. Okay, yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, next question is what has changed in the last few years that has created the flooding? I can at least begin to address that. And, and I don't know if Eagle staff would like to chime in as well, but uh, the primary concern is the high groundwater table. Uh, this started several years ago and uh, without the ability of this water to infiltrate, uh, it's forced to either, it's basically forced to evaporate. And with the groundwater table coming up and the ability for that water to not infiltrate at the same rate as it has historically, uh, that's what leads to these uh, all time highs. Uh, in addition to that, the, the storms that we've been seeing have greater intensity. And so we are seeing additional runoff through some of the more intense, shorter storms that we're seeing across the state. Um, but obviously with Lake Michigan approaching all time highs and, and I work for counties all over the state, uh, this is not uh, unique to this particular lake. This is happening in lakes all over the, uh, all over the state. And so um, certainly not um, an isolated incident. Um, especially as you look at areas of Barry County and Kalamazoo County, um, basically all over, but there are definitely some high profile projects similar to this one as well. And um, Chad, I don't know if you wanna uh, di uh, dive in us on, on that answer as well, but that, that would be my primary component. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, you know, Michigan has seen quite a large, you know, rainfall increase, uh, just precipitation in general. Uh, which also causes the ground to be highly saturated. And so when we do receive rain events or precipitation, it doesn't give a chance for that precipitation to be filtered through the ground. So most of that becomes runoff and then enters into these kettle systems. And that's another portion and reason why a lot of these systems have been gaining so much water. Um, and also like you had stated with, um, with that also increases the groundwater table, which, you know, also limits the amount to where that water can go and filter through. All right, thank you both for answering that. Um, so I think we'll do a, do a couple more through the chat and then we'll go to raise hands. Uh, has the applicant satisfied the Environmental Protection Act 1994 PA 451 as amended Procedures for stabilizing inland lake levels under part 307 inland lake levels of the Natural Protection Act. The project is establishing an unnatural elevation of rainbow and the two adjoining lakes and must pre precede this project per federal regulations. So, you know, the application is still going, going through review. Um, you know, so these are all things that we continue to look at. We are not, uh, the project is not proposing uh, to create a legal lake level. Um, it's looking to more of releasing you know, additional flood, you know, flood waters that were put into the system. Uh, looking at LIDAR and aerial um, historical photos, uh, we feel that the 907 is the ordinary high water mark for that, for that system. And so, you know, we'll, we take that into account along with the review process. Like I said, we'll, we'll look through and make sure that um, all the components are, you know, fit through all of the, um, you know, environment, Environmental Protection Act portions and, and uh, make sure all the boxes are, are checked. Thanks, Chad, for the answer. Um, so the next one, uh, can you assure Muskegon Lake that there will be absolutely no sediment picked up in the wetlands before the inlet to Muskegon Lake? It seems like with more water, the velocity would increase and lead to sediment being picked up. 
When velocity decreases when entering the lake, any sediment will fall out, causing navigation issues for properties close to the inlet for fishing and general boating. I don't know if Paul wants to address this portion with uh, in regards to the wetland and filtration and all that. Yeah, I can I can speak to that a little bit. I can say the the date that we did that second measurement for flow rates, uh, as you may recall, that date had a twice the flow rate um, as our initial inspection in October. Uh, and I can at least at the very least say during the the time of that inspection, there was no uh, bed flow or evidence of movement of the, the channel bottom uh, during that inspection. And again, with the significant amount of uh, wetlands present, we do not anticipate that being an issue. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so at this time, I'd like to go to some of the uh, participants who had their hand raised. All right, so first up, I've got Michael DeWitt, you should be able to unmute yourself and ask your question. I am concerned about property flooding on Muscalunge Lake. My property is adjacent to the two drains that drain Muscalunge Lake. And without the help of neighbors, clear the drain several times in the spring and summer, the lake rises dramatically. If there was a two inch rainfall in the area, both Muscalunge and Rainbow Lake would flood and the flooding would continue on Muscalunge Lake much longer than it would on Rainbow Lake. Who would assume liability for damage of flooding if there was damage? Thank you. Thank you. For that, I'm not sure if that area has flood insurance that may uh, partake in some of that. Um, I do know, uh, like Paul had stated, that there are going to be uh, testing wells to, to verify the, you know, any increase in, in water. Um, and I, I don't know, Paul, if you can speak upon uh, with some of your models that you guys have run you know, what the chances are for possible flooding with increased rainfall. Well, I've, I've heard lots of different concerns related to the flooding and it, and it sounds like um, historically it has been an issue on Muscalange occasionally. Uh, folks that have desired to want the water, want the water levels higher in Muscalange. Uh, I've heard that folks have taken, taken it upon themselves perhaps to, to block the flow from the lake uh, which has caused issues. Um, you know, I did it. I, I did not want to trespass and look at the entire channel. And so uh, I can't accurately state whether the 236 inch pipes control uh, the outflow. Uh, from what I saw, uh, my best guess is that the channel between those 36 inch pipes and the culvert uh, that exists uh, there below Stanton Road. Uh, my guess is that, and, and perhaps Michael could speak to this, but my guess is that that channel is what controls the flow and the elevation of Muscalange Lake itself. Uh, the corrugated metal pipe arch there at Stanton Road, for example, uh, from what I could see from the road, uh, has a, a good solid one foot plus of fall at the downstream end of that particular pipe. Um, you know, I wasn't a boy that long ago, you know, moving four or five rocks that could drop the elevation in that particular culvert six to eight inches, most likely. Um, and so I don't know where folks are getting uh, the creativity to to back up Muscalange if it's at the 36 inch pipes uh, or at Stanton Road. Um, but those opportunities do exist if those outlets are not maintained. Uh, you know, flooding can certainly occur uh, under normal circumstances, uh, and under natural circumstances, but then also unnatural if those are, are blocked off. Okay, thanks, Paul. All right, uh, I have a uh, next person is actually a caller on the telephone. 
And you should be unmuted. Hopefully you're getting a prompt of some kind to unmute yourself. Yes, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Um, this is Julie Swain and we have a cottage on Rainbow Lake. Um, my question is with all the configuring and the uh, analysis and stuff that you've done, um, are you taking in consideration the farm that's draining into Rainbow continually? Um, his irrigation comes in and it seems like um, that would be adding to the level of the lake. Also, um, if everything is good as you expected it or uh, goes through, when would your work start? So again, if I may chime in, um, several questions there. Uh, the first, yes, yep, that that uh, there has been a tile. There is there are tile that, that outlet to the lake, and that was taken into consideration for the design. Uh, as far as construction of the actual project, a lot of that hinges on the uh, acquiring the permit and the time frame that that is uh, obtained. Uh, we do want to work with uh, the local farmers where we're crossing their property. And, uh, you know, perhaps when crops are off in the fall, if we have our application in time, we'd like to bid this, get on contractor schedules. Uh, and once those crops are removed, uh, hopefully start, start construction this fall. And so it's, it's, this is not, to, you know, for folks that think this is going to start immediately, uh, this process still takes time. Okay, well, thanks for the answer and the question. Um, it looks like we are getting close. We're past our 6.30. Um, let's give everyone an update. We have about 68 people on the line and we still have 18 questions to get through. So we will not be getting through all of them. I'll try to, we'll do one more. And then what I can do is I can pass on these questions and I will give you Chad's uh, contact information, which is at the end of this presentation. So you'll be able to um, provide or ask any questions uh, potentially separately after this public hearing, but we'll do one more question. Uh, and the question is, was Slauson Lake considered as a location for flooding to be pumped and used for irrigation? As far as I know, um, Lawson Lake was not looked at. Um, I don't believe Lawson Lake has an outlet either, so I don't know, and I don't know any of the irrigation uh, systems for Lawson Lake. I don't know if that's the lake that's regularly used or how much is actually used for that lake. I don't know if Paul, if you guys have ever looked at that or if that was ever brought up, um, but from uh, my end, uh, that was one, one item that uh, we hadn't approached uh, during this application process. Yeah, I can I can speak to that a little bit. The challenge with pumping up to Lawson Lake is that uh, it is higher than Rainbow, and in effect, what you create is in in uh, in the in the proposed map for those that aren't familiar with the area. Lawson Lake is um, just to the left of the cursor there. It's that small uh, little pond there, and so you know to pump up to that lake in effect within the same watershed, you're you're basically pumping into a circle. Uh, where it doesn't truly effectively solve the problem and, and move that excess water. And so um, I know that uh, local farmers in the area have used these uh, lakes to irrigate in the past. And um, that has, you know, been a source of contention during uh, times when water levels are low. Um, and then also maybe a hope for, for salvation during times when waters are high, but uh, I guess in short, uh, maybe very briefly, we looked at that, uh, but it's not what we would consider a permanent solution. So we did not consider that uh, moving forward. All right, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for the uh, information and the response. So what we're gonna do at this point, and um, you know, thank you to everybody for the, the great questions and to everyone who provided an answer or attempted to help to answer. Um, we're, like I mentioned, we're not gonna be able to get to all of them. I'll provide Chad's contact information and you would be able to, should be able to follow up with Chad if you still would like after this. But it's time for us 
um, to move in the evening to move on to the public hearing part. And so this is the part where we, uh, you can put your comments uh, forward for the official record. It will be recorded. This presentation will be recorded with your comment. Um, but before we kind of get to that, there are some other ways to submit an official comment. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing it today, uh, verbally, um, or if you think of something after this public hearing, um, you want to give some more co additional comments. You can do it by My Waters, which is uh, Water Resources Division Application and Compliance Database. Um, you can email Chad, uh, or you can send him uh, a letter at the mailing address listed here. Feel free to take a photo of the screen if it helps um, to record this information. And you should also be aware of the comment period though, after this public hearing is for 10 days, which is March 26th. So that's how long you have uh, to make some additional comments. So at this point, uh, I would like Chad to invite Chad to give the hearing statement uh, to kind of move this portion of the hearing forward. And again, this will be the portion where you can give your official comment for the record. And then after Chad gives his statement, um, I will kind of elaborate with how we're gonna go about doing that. So go ahead and Chad, uh, start your hearing statement. Thank you. First, uh, there's an official statement I need to read uh, to start the official hearing, um, after which we can begin taking comments. This will take me about 10 minutes. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chad Ipshire. I am the district representative in the Water Resource Division of the Michigan Net Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, also known as EGLE. I will be serving as the hearing officer for this public hearing on EGLE submission number HP2TB0MZY0B1. With me tonight are other EGLE staff that will be assisting with this hearing, one of which is Jeff Fisher, the acting district supervisor. To describe how this is going to work tonight, I will begin with some background information about why we are here tonight. I will then describe the purpose of the hearing and how your comments will be used. Following that, I will outline the procedures under which we will take your comments and then describe what will happen after tonight's hearing. It will then be time for you to provide comments and we will spend the majority of time tonight listening to those comments. At the end of the hearing, I will provide a short summary and closing. By way of background information, the Water Resource Division is responsible for administering a variety of programs that help protect inland lakes and streams, wetlands, floodplains, sand dunes, and the Great Lakes. These programs regulate certain activities such as dredging or filling a lake, stream, or wetland, constructing a dam, constructing a marina, placing shore protection or constructing docks, and building in a designated critical sand dune area, wetland, or floodplain. The law governing those responsibilities is the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act 1994 PA 451 as amended, also known as Act 451. We are here tonight because Todd Sadler of the Montcalm County Drain Commission has proposed the following. To initially draw down 2.6 feet of Rainbow Lake surface water to an elevation of 907 through an underground 15 inch diameter county drain pipe that will discharge an initial maximum 2 million gallons of water per day through wetland and stream that enters Muscalunge Lake for approximately 90 days until surface water reaches 907. After the initial drawdown, the connection will remain and continue to discharge any floodwaters above 907. With Rainbow Lake and the upstream lakes and wetlands occupying about 220 acres and Muscalunge Lake system occupying about 232 acres, excluding other inputs or outputs, it is estimated that if the Rainbow Lake system were to draw, be drawn down one inch in a day for approximately 90 days, the Muscalunge Lake system would rise 0.95 inches. However, Muscalunge Lake has an outlet and is therefore estimated to have minimal increase to the Muscalunge Lake level. In order for a permit to be granted, Eagle must find that the proposed activities described in the public notice meet certain criteria set by part 301 Inland Lakes and Streams, and Part 303, Wetlands Protection of Act 451. In general, we must consider the effect of the proposed project on the stream and wetlands. When reviewing an application for permit under provisions of Part 301, Inland Lakes and Streams of Act 451, EGLE is charged to make the following considerations as required by Section 30106 of Part 301. 
First, the department shall issue a permit if it finds that the structure or project will not adversely affect the public trust or repairing rights. The department sh shall not grant permit if the proposed project or structure will unlawfully impair or destroy any of the waters or other natural resources of the state. When reviewing an application for permit under the provisions of Part 303, Wetlands Protection of Act 451, EGLE is charged to make the following indications as required by Section 30311 of Part 303. A permit for an activity listed in Section 30304 shall not be approved unless the department determines that the issuance of a permit is in the public interest, that the permit is necessary to realize the benefits derived from the activity, and that the activity is otherwise lawful. A permit shall not be issued unless it is shown that an unacceptable distribution will not result to the aquatic resource or disruption. Sorry about that. An acceptable disruption will not result to the aquatic resources. A permit shall not be issued unless the applicant also shows either of the following. The proposed activity is primarily dependent upon being located in the wetland. A feasible and prudent alternative does not exist. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to give anyone interested in the Montcalm County Drain Commission's proposed project an opportunity to provide information that EGLE can use in making the decision whether or not to issue a permit. Please recognize that EGLE can only use the information you provide if it relates to the criteria that EGLE must use in making a decision. Some of you may simply want to express your support or opposition to the project. We will be happy to make a note of your position, but please understand that EGLE is by law not allowed to base our decision on whether or not there is widespread support or opposition to the project. In just a moment, I will outline the procedures we will use for taking your comments. But before I do, I need to mention that the notice of this hearing was published on MLive on March 6, 2021. To ensure that the hearing is conducted in a fair manner, we will follow these steps. First, we will call the names of those who have indicated that they would like to make a statement we will call on you in the order in which you register for the hearing. Please remember that EGLE can only use the information you provide if it relates to the criteria that EGLE must use in making a decision. If you have, a, if you have questions and there is time at the end, depending on which is more appropriate, we will either allow the applicant to respond or EGLE staff will respond. Second, we will call on those who have indicated during the session that they would like to speak. If you have written comments or materials that you would like to present, please email them to me, upload them into my waters, or send them to me via US mail to the Grand Rapids District Office. When all the comments have been completed, we will ask if anyone else would like to make a statement. When your name is called, your microphone will be unmuted. As you begin your comments, please state your name and any group or association you may represent. Each person will be given four minutes to make their comments. We will indicate to you when you have a minute left. Please begin wrapping up your comments and end within the allotted time. If need be, we will indicate when your time has ended. I ask that we all be courteous and respectful to one another tonight. Please recognize that Eagle staff is here tonight to provide a fair opportunity for you to express your comments on the proposed project and to listen to those comments. The hearing is being recorded and your comments will be part of the information EGLE will consider in making its decision on whether or not to issue a permit on the proposed project. The public comment period for this public hearing is open for 10 days after the date of this hearing, ending on March 26, 2021. Additional information and comments submitting in writing during the 10-day public comment period will also be considered in EGLE's decision. Following the close of the public comment period, EGLE will make a decision to either issue a permit for the project as proposed or with modifications or send a letter of denial. You may find out what the decision is by checking the EGLE My Waters website. Thank you for your attention. We'll begin calling the names of those who have indicated that they would like to make a statement. All right, thank you for making that statement, Chad. Um, I have, as Chad had mentioned, the people who had pre-registered and indicated that they wanted to make comments will go first. I have a list of six people right now. So the way that we will do this is I will list the first person and then also list the person who is up next. And then we will find you in the attendees list in Zoom and unmute you. And then you'll have to unmute yourself and then you can give your comment. Uh, and again, as Chad mentioned, please state your name and any affiliation that you have. And then you'll have four minutes 
um, and I will be keeping track of those four minutes. And once you get uh, close to having a minute left, uh, I'll let you know that you have a minute left so that you can uh, wrap up and start finishing your comments. And then once we get through the list, um, anybody else who would like to make an additional comment who's on the line may raise their hand um, in the Zoom application, and then I will call on you in order. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first person that I have uh, on my list is Rob Gates, and the person up after that is Stacy Hickox. So Rob Gates, we will find you and unmute you. It looks like you are unmuted, Rob. You can go ahead and start whenever you're ready. All right, thank you, Ryan. My name is Rob Gates, and I'm over here in the northeast uh, corner of the lake on Walter Road. And we are right over here where the inlet comes in. And I'd like to first say that uh, that inlet creek, uh, if you look at uh, water level maps and whatnot, that, that should be several feet deep. That should be uh, three to five feet deep, uh, roughly. And, and right now, as anyone that has gone through and done that study can attest, I mean, it's, it's mere inches deep. And it is filled with sediment, filled with muck. Um, you can't even get a kayak or a canoe down there. Now, when uh, I believe it was Paul Fortin there that went and did some flow measures and whatnot, he said that uh, you know things were looking good, but you know, 180 million gallons in 90 days, uh, which is what Todd pretty much proposed that's going to change the flow that's going to bring everything with it and you know two two million gallons a day that wasn't flowing through when paul checked it out um anyone that's lived over here i've been here just shy of five years anyone that's been here for for a, a decade or more can tell you that last year this corner of the lake was the worst with muck and sediment that it's ever been probably in the history of this lake Myself, I pulled several people out of it. Watercraft were getting stuck. Pontoons were getting stuck. Boats were getting stuck. People didn't know that the muck was that deep because for years and years and years, they used to go over there and they fish and they would jet ski and they would do things like that. Now, last winter, a little over a year ago, we had a pumping of Rainbow Lake through irrigation from a local farmer done without a permit and millions and millions of gallons flowed through and came through that very inlet through the pond, through the swamps. And in my opinion, and in many other people's opinion, that is what has caused this muck in this corner to be the worst. Now I know science says the swamps and, and the lowlands and the wetlands are gonna, are gonna uh, filter all of that sediment out, but, but take a look. Everything has been flowing underneath Gravel Ridge Road, through the wetlands, through the pond, and into the inlet up here in the northeast corner for all of these years, everything but the exception of Rainbow Lake. Okay, so everything is still flowing in, and we're getting deeper and deeper and deeper in muck. Um, that is my main concern, being over here in this corner of the lake. Now, something else that I don't understand, uh, just shy of three miles away to the west, it's county drain number 51. You have about one minute left. Rob. Thank you. That uh, drains into county drain number 10, uh, which seems to be a perfect way to uh, drain down Rainbow Lake. Uh, it would incur a little bit more of a cost, a little bit more manpower um, to, to make a drain, to connect to drain number 51. But I think that's a very, very viable solution. We have seven lakes that are going to be affected by the draining of Rainbow Lake. Seven lakes that are in this stretch all the way down to Lincoln Lake. And they're all going to be affected and it won't be in a good way. I uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your comment. All right, the next, right, the next person uh, is Stacy Hickox. 
Uh, and on deck is Douglas Hills. So Stacy Hickox, uh, we will find you in our list. Hey, Ryan. Um, Stacy no notified us that she is under Paul Manteca. So I'm, <laughs> I'm muting that name. So you'll see. Okay, gotcha. All right. So you should be all unmuted. Thank you. This is Stacy Hickox. So we have a home on Rainbow Lake. We've been on the lake for 18 years. And I just wanted to stress the significance of lowering the level, at least to the proposed level. We haven't been able to use our property for more than two years. And that's a significant loss. We've lost all of our trees that have been on the property. And um, luckily we haven't had any damage inside our home that we know of, but um, it's a significant problem. And it's in 18 years, we've never seen the lake levels anywhere near this level. And so, um, you know, whatever the appropriate solution is, it just something needs to be approved to get this uh, so that at least after three years, we'll be able to use our property. That's all I have. Thank you for your comment. All right, our next um, person is Douglas Hills and then followed by Jack Frayling. So Douglas Hills. Oh, it looks, yep, looks like you're unmuted, Douglas. Hi, uh, I live at uh, on Weedale Road up on the north end of Muskelung Lake, and uh, I'm a neighbor of Rob Gapes, and Rob has pretty much described the same problem that I foresee and uh, concerns that I have, that the uh, this end of the lake cannot handle that much sediment coming into it without something being done to address that. And that pretty much, if you want to take the sludge out of here, some method, then look into doing that. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. All right. Uh, next is Jack Frayling, followed by James Brandt. So Jack Frayling. Looks like you're unmuted on our end. Thank you. Yeah, we can hear you. I'm the uh, president of the Muscle and Lake Association. So I get a lot of calls when the lake level is too high or too low. Um, we have varying distances of homes away from the shoreline. Um, our place on the north or south end of the lake is about 140 feet away from the lake shore, but our next door neighbor is about 15 feet. And he has chronic problems with um, the wet yard, septic system, you name it. Um, and there are various elevations along, all around the lake too. So some places are affected more than others. And I think that any change in elevation that can't be controlled, if, if our drainage plugs up, um, there is no quick solution to get branches and debris out of those culverts. And I just think that we need to make sure that we are not getting any debris or sediment the north end sediment is a big issue. Rob said he's been there five or six years, I think. Um, I've been coming there 61 years, not to age myself. Um, and he is right. It's never been as bad as what it is. And there was only one event. I promise Chad I wouldn't talk about it. Um, last year that seemed to change that. Um, so I just like careful consideration. I feel for Rainbow Lake. I just want to be sure that all avenues have been looked at. I've been told that there's state lands to the east of Rainbow Lake. Um, I don't know if that was looked at an alternative um, as far as flow. Um, but I just want to make sure that all I have needs have been looked at and not just must be Thank you. 
Thank you for your comment. All right, so next up is James Brandt, and then on deck is Jeff Miller. So James, it looks like you're unmuted on our end. So feel free to unmute yourself and then go ahead if you can. Oh, you're unmuted. Are you there, James? He's unmuted. We might have to come back to him again, maybe. Okay. Okay, it looks like he unmuted himself. Okay, now he's remuted. All right, so let's uh, let's move on to Jeff Miller. And then we'll come back to James. So it looks like you're unmuted on our end, Jeff. And there is there isn't anybody else on my list after James and Jeff. So at that point we will uh, go to the rest of the participants. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay, my comment is that uh you know, we get that uh, you're putting it into the filtration of the swamp and everything. But according to what has been said here tonight, there is a stream that goes through the swamp. So when you put more water in, the water in the swamp isn't necessarily going to be coming out. It will kind of stay there. The new water will just flow right through that stream directly into here. Um, on the north side here, not only is it just the muck coming in, but it's also all the runoff from the farms. Uh, next to me on the north side here, we have a drain from farms behind us. So every time it rains, everything flows down there and we're getting like a peninsula out into the lake because of it. Well, that's the same that's going to happen on the other end. Eventually, that part of the lake is gonna be non-existent except a little stream, big stream, that goes right out into the main part of the lake. So with the muck there, that's a huge concern. Um, with the, uh, you know, the chemicals that we put into our lake, if all of a sudden we're dumping all this extra water in, what's to say a lot of that, not all of it, but some of it's gonna still, you know, just go straight out to the back, you know, be washed out of here with the first rain. And then, you know, we kind of defeated our purpose of paying the money to get the weed control and everything in there. It's, it's definitely a concern that uh, it's has got to be taken a look at out there. Yes, on Muscalunge Lake, there's a lot of flooding. When I first moved up here, I know some of the houses on the south side, you know, we could show you pictures of those being underwater, just like rainbow. You know, we get it. Nobody likes that. But, you know, there, there, I think there's got to be a lot more thought put into this of who's going to regulate our lake and control that stuff. You know, during a rain, that 15 inch pipe is gonna be really, really full. And with that extra water in there, that's gonna be able to push out real fast. You know, yes, you can only get so much through a pipe unless it's being forced. So I kind of concur with Doug and uh, Rob that, you know, we have some serious sediment issues here on the north side that I think has to be resolved before we just say, yeah, sure, that's okay, let's do it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your comment. All right, let's go back to James Brandt. Oh, did he just fall off? Oh, there he is. Uh, James, are you able to unmute yourself? We, we still can't hear you, James. If, if you can hear us, another option might be to call in by the phone, on the phone number that was provided. Uh, then you may be able to raise your hand by phone if you're having audio issues with your computer. Okay, I think I think we're gonna have to move on. Sorry, James. All right. So now, so at this point, we'll move on to the rest of the. Um, Participants of anyone who wants to make a statement, if you're on the phone, again, you can hit pound two and that will raise your hand in the Zoom app. And then we will be able to call on you from that. 
Uh, otherwise, if you're on your computer, you can hit the raise hand icon um, and that will take you, that will raise your hand in Zoom and then we'll be able to call on you. So it looks like the first person that I have right now is Stephen Bracey. I will unmute you. And then you can unmute yourself uh, and then go ahead and make your comment. Hello, uh, my name's Steve Bracey. Um, Peggy and I, my wife, have enjoyed our cottage since uh, 1989. Uh, we happen to be the little blue A-frame that you saw in the picture uh, earlier in the presentation. Um, this will be the third year we haven't been able to use the cottage. And um, right now the whole entire first floor has been gutted of uh, drywall, ceiling, insulation and everything. So we're kind of just waiting for things to happen uh, with the lake and would really like the help of our neighbors. I think that um, over the years, I think everyone can admit that this last three years have been unprecedented on the lake levels and how high they've been and how much rain we've gotten. And I also think that over the 30 years that we've been coming up on the place, the lake levels have fluctuated and it's cyclical. Every seven to 10 years, things come up, it goes down, it comes up, it goes down. Nothing like this has ever even come close to happening since we've owned the place. I don't think, um, I, I like the idea of the drain, but I, I don't think that the water is gonna be flowing, I, I'm sure it won't be, like continually, that it would affect Muscalons Lake, um, and even one rainfall or two rainfalls may not even, once our lake level gets to its normal level, which it has come, it's pretty much been at for the last 30 years, up and down, up and down, I don't see how the drain can be a bad thing. And um, we're, just ho we're just hoping that um, it, can, it, can be, it can happen, that's all. Because uh, nobody wants a flooded out home, the township needs the tax base. Our, everyone wants their home or cottage um, to retain its value and pa to pass it on to their kids. So uh, I guess that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. All right, at this point, I don't have any more hands raised. Uh, we'll give it another minute here. Um, if anybody would like to make an official comment for the record tonight. And then um, if not, I will uh, we'll close the hearing out and then we'll also go through the other ways that you can make an official comment for the record. And I have, I have Stephen Bracey's hand raised again, but I believe he just went for his, his comment. Is there anybody else who would like to make a comment? Are you seeing anyone, Jim? Oh, here we go. I have a couple, couple more people right now. Um, all right, John Winnens, you should be unmuted. John, are you there? Can anybody hear John? No, I can't hear John. Uh, John, if you need to check your- Can you hear me now? There you go. Right, there you go. Yep. There you are. Okay, you thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I'd just like to follow up. Uh, we're, me and my wife own a cottage around the corner from uh, Steve Bracey and his wife. And just like to say that our property sustained uh, substantial water damage this year. And we had uh, quite a bit of cost and uh, flood prevention. But I would like to, you know, just follow up with what Steve said that, you know, I think once this drain's established, I don't think there's going to be much water flow out of Rainbow Lake. And, um, you know, I just look 
think that, you know, it, it's a re the responsible thing to do for, for the township, the county, um, you know, all the homeowners in the area should support this. Um, there was a comment tonight about two 36 inch drains that are flowing out of Musculon Lake. Uh, this is the first I'm hearing of those drains. I don't know how those are, were originally established. Maybe they were originally established because of the lake owners were going through the same thing we're going through. If that's the, if that would be the scenario, then I think, you know, um, everybody needs to take a hard look at, you know, the natural water flow that's involved in the, all the property uh, and all the wetlands that are around Pine Township. And if they can get it flowing down to the tributaries of the rivers and so forth, then I think that needs to be accomplished. So um, that's all I have to say, and I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. All right, the next person we have up is a uh, phone-in caller with a, a last four zero nine six zero. Hi, this is Julie Swain again. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Um, well, our history on Rainbow Lake is my grandfather bought the cottage uh, when I was a year old, and that was over 66 years ago. And the history that we have with flooding is that um, I've seen it flood uh, a cycle, usually around 20 years. And so... Um, our cottage has gone through, we've had to put in at least four feet of sand in order to save the cottage foundation. The um, furnace, hot water heater, um, the pump for the well <clears throat> is all ruined. We have to replace probably the well and the septic. And, um, you know, it's just heartbreaking. My mom, who owns it, is 90. I would like to have her see the drain in before she passes, if possible, and restore it so that she can at least go up there and spend a few years and enjoy it and have memories. Um, but it, the, the cottage next to us is ruined. They'll probably have to tear that down. That was the original cottage on the lake, and that's, that's gone. So... Um, you know, we just hope that there can be a remedy and, and soon. I appreciate the time. Yeah, thanks for your comment. All right, so next person we have is James Brand. James, are you able to unmute yourself? Try this again. Still, still can't hear you, James. You might need to, again, call, call in, uh, or if you wanna stay in the presentation, I will be providing other ways that you can make a statement uh, by email or mail or through my water. So there are, there are other ways if you're having audio issues. Um, is there anybody else that would like to make a statement for the record uh, on this application. Okay, we have another caller. We have uh, Randy Mancarelli. Randy, it looks like you're muted, uh, unmuted on our end, if you can unmute yourself. How's that? Can you hear yeah, me? We can hear you, Randy. Yep, get it. You did a good job on my, my last name. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. I tried. So uh, I'll give you a little history. I've been on Musquanch Lake for since I've been six. So that's almost 60 years. My mom and dad started the place um, second generation. I've seen Musquanch Lake flood several times in my life that I've been there with the tiles being in place. So one of the concerns I have 
on the north end is all the sediment. We used to be able to fish that area down there very easily. We used to be able to run our pontoons in that area on that north end with no problem. I um, mean, we used to have weeds growing in that area. And over the past few years, that's all gone away. And it's like uh, uh, the guys on the north end have stated that it's, you can't even get a boat through there anymore. So on the south end, on the two tiles that are exiting, uh, we clear them every spring and fall. I mean, whenever we have to, we have to clear them out. But there's a point where we can only clear so much out because those tiles, if you guys actually have looked in them and actually surveyed the tiles themselves, you'll see that they're plugged up with debris and their flow is limited to the out, outward side. The only concern I would have is that if you're gonna flood, you know, put this water into our lake, that you would take some initiative to help actually maintain those tiles or at least clean them out for this go around so that we don't have, cause there's other people's, I'm on high ground. So when it floods, it's gotta flood bad, but there's people that got low land around Musquans Lake. And, you know, we get a couple inches of water plus, you know, that's rainwater. We get field runoff and you put that all together that's when everything gets crazy in muscalons because it just can't, they can't support the water. I've seen the water above the tiles many a times. Um, so that would be my only comment that maybe the township or the county could come in and clear those tiles for us before they start this program. And I think that would alleviate a lot of the issues with you know, our concerns about flooding. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you for your comment. All right, the next uh, person we have up with their hand raised is another uh, caller, uh, the 0731. Um, you're, going, you're unmuted, you can go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? My name is Scott Pavlak. Yeah, we can hear you, go ahead. Okay, uh, I'm on Rainbow Lake, my wife and I and our family, we've had a cottage there for a number of years. If you're familiar with Rainbow Lake at all, uh, we're on the point kind of between the two lakes. And uh, our cottage literally for the last year and a half has been on the water, meaning that we had water so high that it was basically surrounding our cottage. Uh, we're doing things to, to alleviate that, but uh, fortunately the cottage hasn't been completely damaged, but it's in not in good shape. Anyways, I'm also a drainage contractor and I've also worked on projects exactly like this. And so to the people at Musculunge Lake, I'd like to say, it doesn't have to be an either or situation. You know, like the gentleman says, hey, those tiles at the road can be cleaned to make sure that Musculunge does get a adequate flow of water out of there. That can be part of the program. I've also worked on lakes where we've uh, installed sediment traps, you know, before water enters a lake so that you make sure the sediment doesn't enter the lake which sounds like maybe they already have an issue with that too. And I also agree with the gentlemen that, that gentlemen that have said that uh, this isn't going to be a, a full flowing uh, pipe, you know, all the time. It's going to be intermittent flow at most. And once the lake gets down to some degree, you know, when the lake's lower and you do get a two inch rain, it almost has a tendency to hold the water back a little bit almost kind of like a sponge. When a sponge is full of water, it doesn't hold any more water. But if you can get that sponge down a little bit and wring it out a little bit, well, guess what? It will hold more water. And so a lot of those things I think can be alleviated. And so I think it can be beneficial for all parties involved. It doesn't have to be, you know, our lake or your lake. It can be, you know, you know, be together and we can work in that respect. You know, I don't want to step on Paul Thornton's feet here as to say what should happen or shouldn't happen, but I think those things, things can be worked out. Um, my next concern is that, yes, the water is cycling and it does go up and down. Well, what's going to happen next time it cycles? Is it going to go up higher and higher? And also, you know, like our, our cottage has been, un, you know, 
very limited use for the last two and a half years. And uh, the last year and a half, our septic system has probably been under oh, two foot of water. Uh, what type of water quality does that do for all the water tables in the area? For anybody's wells, and I guarantee you, I know from talking to the other people in the area, you know, ours is by far not the only septic system or whatever that's, you know. So, I mean, I think things can be done. I think this can be worked out, and I think it can be beneficial for all parties. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. All right, does anybody else, uh, would anybody else like to make another comment or an official comment if you haven't already done so? Um, I don't have any other hands raised at this point. Uh, this would be a good time. You should see on your screen other ways to make an official comment. Uh, if you did not want to make one tonight, again, by my waters, uh, by email, and then by mail. And again, the public comment period goes until March 26th. Anybody else that would like to make a comment? Okay, I'm not seeing any other hands. So I, I, yep. I saw um, uh, um, Michael DeWitt raise his hand and lowered a couple of times. So uh, Mr. DeWitt, if you do want to make a comment, your hand is not raised, just to let you know. There you oh, go. Okay. There it is. Oh, oh no. which went down again. <laughs> so leave your hand raised, please, Mr. DeWitt. Um, I don't see him on here. Uh, hold on. Let's see if I, there he is. All right. It looks like you're unmuted, Michael, if you'd like to okay. say something. Can you hear me now? Yep, can hear you. Thank you very much. A um, couple of comments. Um, my property on Muscalunge Lake is adjacent to the two tiles. Um, I have seen them get plugged periodically through the year. It is worse in the springtime than other times, but from time to time they do get plugged and we have a lot of good neighbors who come and clean those out. If you have 2 million gallons a day, in addition to what Muscalunge Lake gets through both through spring fed and through drains from the farms around, um, there will be flooding. To what extent? I have no idea. Um, my first question, my first comment is Rainbow Lake has, a, has an issue. Um, the property is flooding. Um, the only way they want to solve it is to push the problem downstream. And I don't think that's a good answer, especially since I've heard several of the Rainbow Lake residents comment on the fact that their septic systems have been flooded. How much of an issue is that going to be to both Muscalunge Lake and the six additional lakes down? septic system water downstream. Um, I'm also concerned about the, the muck issue. Um, I live, like I said, adjacent to the drains, but when you go fishing uh, to the north side of the lake, there are a lot of areas you can't go anymore because the water's too shallow because of the sludge. And I think if you Bring those tiles down to Gravel Ridge Road, and then two million gallons a day go from there into our lake. We are going to pick up lots of not only sludge, but we uh, all sorts of debris will wash and plug up the drains. And it, if the drains get plugged, I've seen that water go up dramatically. In just a day or two after a rain. Um, if we had a two inch rain, not only would our lake go up two inches, a rainbow would go up two inches and that water washing downstream would adversely affect all of the residents, not just on Muscalinch Lake, but all the lakes downstream. 
Um, thank you very much for your time. I'm done. Thank you for your comment. All right, is there anybody else uh, who is either on the phone? Uh, and again, if you're on the phone, make sure you hit uh, pound two. Pound two will allow you to raise your hand virtually uh, and then we can call on you. So that's pound two if you're on the phone and, and you just need to hit the hand raise icon if you are on your laptop or computer. All right, I am not seeing any more hands. So Chad, if you wanna go ahead, I'd like to invite you to give a closing statement for the hearings portion. Okay. Just wanna say thank you for your comments and cooperation. We appreciate your interest in the proposed project and that you took time to be here tonight. As indicated at the beginning of the hearing, you may submit additional written comments until March 26, 2021. Following the close of the public comment period, we'll consider all comments received to make a decision on the proposed project. Just to remind those that may still want to submit a comment, comments can be submitted via MyWaters, email, or US mail. The hearing is now closed. Thank you again. All right, thank you very much. All right, so the next slide here, I just wanted to, you know, again, provide Chad's contact information uh, here for some of those additional questions that we weren't able to get to. Um, you can contact Chad um, with his contact information here. And I should, again, I wanted to mention that this is gonna be recorded or this is recorded, it's being recorded. Uh, it will go on our YouTube channel and then you also be sent a link to the recording that you can view at a later time. Um, and at this point, I'll leave this slide up and then uh, Jeff, did you wanna make any final closing comments? Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Um, I just wanted to express our appreciation to everybody that uh, took the time to uh, tune in and participate in this hearing this evening and give us your comments and um, let us know what your concerns are with the project. We take all those things seriously and we will review them with care to make sure that we are giving everything its um, due consideration. Um, we appreciate you uh, taking advantage of the opportunity and your willingness to learn about this project and give us some your, give us your input. And we hope that all of you uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. All right, thank you very much, Jeff. Yeah, thank you to all of our panelists, uh, all the attendees tonight. Okay, looks like if, you, if you'd like and we're up to, we could take a couple more questions before we finally sign out. Um, even though we just kind of gave our closing statement. Uh, Jeff and Chad, are you up for one or two more questions? Yeah, that or if people want to, uh, they can shoot me an email and uh, we can discuss things further tomorrow too, depending on people's uh, timeline. Okay, gotcha. All right, let's 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 do that then. It looks like people are, are dropping off a little bit. Um, so thank you all. You can, you can reach Chad by the information uh, that I mentioned before. Um, thanks for everyone who made their comments uh, for the record and who asked questions. Um, and everyone have a good evening. Thank you very much.